Okay, so here we are on the part two of uh, Falkland's uniform and equipment. Um, this is a little bit difficult to show on video uh, because it's a very bulky item. Uh, this is the British issue Parker, um, which <coughs> this differs from the the Arctic windproofs. They're similar in design in some regards. Uh, this has the in regards to the wide hood. Uh, the lower pockets are of the bellows design, um, but this was the army issue, primarily seen with 5th Infantry Brigade. Um, you've got a Velcro in liner, which differs from the extreme cold weather jacket liners, uh, combat liners, I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, it, the liner itself uh, fastens across the front with three Velcro tabs, which are the three Velcro strips on the other side. It does have sleeves. Uh, ventilation underneath the arms here, uh, which <coughs> it actually velcros inside the smock, uh, the uh, Parker. Sorry, as you can see here, there is a um, poacher pocket in the tail of the Parker, and obviously a uh, crotch uh, flap here. Button up the front. Uh, the wired hood, which is also. Uh, blanket line, this isn't removable, just the main liner is removable. Um, similar system with the hood as the Arctic Windproofs with a draw cord at the neck to draw the neck in and then another cord to actually pull the hood in around the face and this big wire cowl that you can mould to keep the wind chill off. Uh, this is the original wire still in here, uh, it's not snapped thankfully unlike the, on the Arctic Windproofs so this will keep going a bit longer, I might have to replace it at some point. Uh, rank tabs to the shoulders, uh, epaulets. Um, as I say, the upper pockets are just patch pockets. You've then got the lower pockets of the bellows design. Uh, and this is worn very, they're worn quite long. They come down to roughly the knee, around the knee. And there's a famous photograph of these being worn um, by the Scots Guards on Tumbledown, I think, which I will include for reference. Um, the cuffs can be drawn in with a little strap here which attaches to a piece of velcro and you can draw the cuff in and the cuffs are also edged with a material similar to that used on the extreme cold weather uh, clothing liners which I'll show you in a minute so yeah that's the uh, Falkland Zero Parker not really a fighting garment uh, you'd struggle to fight in it I think this is very long it say, comes down to the knees but certainly good for uh, keeping out the cold when you're uh, stationary for any length of time. So here we have the uh, extreme cold weather inner clothing. Um, you have first of all uh, the combat liner, combat jacket liner, which is uh, this is a pre-metric size three um, liner combat smock. Uh, no sleeves, essentially a waistcoat made of this uh, blank, um, blanket uh, quilted material, um, obviously stitched, and then it's got a sort of uh, faux pile, a uh, faux, essentially what you'd find in cushions, the white fibre material inside, which uh, provides obviously a layer of, of air for insulation. Uh, so you've got this waistcoat type jacket. I've not seen um, these being worn externally or visibly in photos. The Falcons obviously are supposed to be worn under the combat, um, but I don't know how much these were used in favour of the extreme cold weather jacket liner, which I will show you in a moment. Um, you also have a set of trousers which go with that, and these again are the pre-metric size one liner cold weather trousers. Very similar design, uh, zip up the side of the leg and velcro at the ankles there, so they can be put on and taken on and off easily. And again, the similar idea of the blanket. Uh, the um, come on, Simon, quilting, quilting, quilted stitching with the, the padding in there to give you a layer of air and a layer of insulation. Draw cord at the waist. Um, I'll just bring in the extreme cold weather jacket liners now, which are similar in some regards to the, the liner of the uh, Parker, which you've already seen, and they have sleeves and so on, but they're fastened with buttons at the front rather than Velcro. You can see there are a set of four buttons at the front, uh, two for each buttonhole, uh, so that you can button it tight or, or loose. This is a metric example, um, and it's got the standard. Uh, square uh, quilted stitching, um, see similar to the Parker liner ventilation at the 
the uh, armpits there and you've got the same sort of edging as was used on the cuffs of the parka. And this, this cold weather clothing was all introduced in the 1970s, uh, so it was ready in time for the, the Falklands campaign. It was all there in stock, they knew what to, what to issue and it was very effective in, in providing uh, insulation. Um, however, obviously troops who aren't acclimatised to the conditions at hand are still going to suffer no matter how well you wrap them up. Um, another example of that is a slightly earlier version, which I've put somewhere. Here it is. Now this is um, this is a 70s example, size one. So it's quite small, similar to trousers. It's just I have wearing sets in metric size, and I've tried to pick up when I see them. I'll pick up pre-metric uh, examples. Liner cold weather jacket, Mark II. Slightly different nomenclature to the to the um, 80, uh, the mid 80s example here, which is uh, liner extreme cold weather jacket. So slight change in the nomenclature. Same basic design, but the quilting's different. As you can see, it's just this zigzag pattern. Um, same four button, four button holes at the front with uh, adjustment there, and the, the ventilation under the arm and everything. So that's a look at cold weather clothing. Uh, and the next one, we'll probably have a look at waterproof clothing. Um, I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now.